All right, guys, let's take a look at these capacitance questions that I gave you guys. Uh, the first thing we were doing in class is we were looking at all the equations that we have to use when we're looking at series or parallel capacitors. So the first equation that we looked at was xc is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times frequency times capacitance. Now, if you want to make this a little bit easier on yourself, you can put this into one of those pi charts. And let's see, we would have xc is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times frequency times capacitance. And that way we'd be able to reconfigure the equation. And looking there, you can see that the capacitance value is on the bottom here. And the capacitance in the xc just changes place if you needed to find the capacitance value. So that equation is 1 over 2 times pi times frequency times xc. You'll notice that on both of those equations I've put these brackets around there. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. Otherwise, you're going to do 1 divided by 2 and then multiply by uh, the rest of the values that are on the denominator. So you can see there that this guy right here and this guy right here just change spots in each of those equations. Okay, The value for capacitors is in farads. A one farad capacitor is a massive capacitor. Like a one farad capacitor you'd use um, for your stereo system for your car. So most of the ones I will give you will be in microfarads, which is 10 to the negative 6. So we'll just put that there. Microfarads is times 10 to the negative 6 farads. Okay, the other equations we need are for series and parallel connections. So let's just take a look at those guys. If we have a number of capacitors that are in series, then we've changed one of three things. We've either changed the size of the plates, the type of dielectric, or the distance between the plates. And you can see that when they're drawn out like this, from this plate to this plate, we've increased the distance from here to here, where the electrons have to charge up on the first capacitor, rip off and go to the second capacitor, and then finally to the third capacitor there. So essentially what we've done is we've uh, increased the distance between the plates. Easy enough. So we'll put here increases the distance between the plates. And with series or parallel connections, we're either increasing the size of the capacitor or decreasing the size of the capacitor. Well, in this case, we've increased the distance between the plates, which effectively decreases the amount of charge that you can have on the capacitors. So if I put C1, C2, and C3 to denote the three capacitors that are there, our total capacitance, or total ability to hold a charge, would be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Throw some brackets in there, maybe some double brackets, and that's our equation for total capacitance. Now, the xc value, xc total, remember, is an ohmic value. And we're going to treat capacitors in series the same as we would resistors in series. So we're just going to do xc1 plus xc2 plus xc3. The reactants on the first one plus the reactants on the second one plus the third one will give us our total reactants for the circuit. So it's exactly the same equation as if they were in series and if they were resistors. Okay, so this equation right here is going to mess you up a little bit. But think of how they're set up. You've increased the distance between the plates, you've decreased the amount of charge that's going to be on the capacitor. If we look at the parallel connection, 
with three other capacitors, C1, C2, and C3. Well, if we take a look at that guy, effectively we have now created a much larger capacitor. The surface area on each of those guys is going to now add together. So we're going to have more surface area on the capacitor. So we're effectively going to have a larger capacitor. So we'll put parallel here. Right? We have increased the surface area. which gives us a larger capacitor. So our total capacitance is going to be the capacitance on the first plus the capacitance on the second plus the ability to hold a charge on the third. Okay, And if we're looking at the parallel circuit, this is going to be the exact same as, this, as if we had three parallel resistors. So our XC total which again is an ohmic value, is going to make use of the reciprocal equation. Right? Think of these as three parallel resistors. XC1 plus 1 over XC2 plus 1 over XC3. So for these guys, if you don't have different animals, you just have capacitors or you just have coils in series or in parallel, you're either just going to add them up or you're going to use a reciprocal equation. So that covers all of the, the equations that we need for the capacitance questions. So I'll stop there, and then if you look at the second video on the capacitance questions, uh, we'll start going through each of the, the questions that are in that handout.